Good morning, everyone. Yes, it's my bathrobe. And yes, I'm outside. And the reason why I'm doing that now, even if I wear my bathrobe, is because I just cannot wait for it. Okay, so let me explain to you a few things. Because I feel there is a misconception about stuff. We will talk about Great Pyrenees aggression. We're going to talk about guarding. And we're going to talk about barking. You know, most of you know these are breed traits. And actually breed traits that were bred into beyond 40,000 years. To be more precise, since the Neolithic or Paleolithic time, dogs were preferred who bark, guard, and are aggressive. Because that's how we made it so far. If we don't have the dogs back then, we would not be able to have humanity right now as we have it. So... Let me explain a few things. Aggression is an important tool for the dog's survival. Imagine if he wouldn't have this tendency of aggression, he would not be able to walk his way through and fight himself through other puppies to get milk, right? You are aggressive. I am aggressive. My neighbor is aggressive. Everybody is aggressive, but we just don't see it. I'm aggressively locking my car because I don't want anybody to take my car. Right? I'm aggressively driving in my lane, making sure I'm not going into the other direction. So aggression is not something that we see as a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It helps us survive. So that taking into consideration that the dogs show aggression to survive is completely natural. Now things can get a little bit out of hand because for multiple reasons. Trauma, for example. The dog has nutritional malnourished. Um, there is a forced behavior, for example, a behavior that is forced to show aggression if it actually not be necessary. So sometimes it's also lack of education. Now, if your dog is aggressive, that you see as aggression, for the dog's perspective, it's a way for survival. So before you address aggression, the first thing you have to look for is why is my dog showing this kind of behavior? What is in for him? A guardian breed shows aggression to protect their flock, right? protect their property, it's inbred. The understanding of family versus strangers is one part that we bred into. Now the next thing we want to look for is understanding the dog's barking. We bred dogs to bark, right? We, we over the generations, over millions of generations, we prefer dogs who bark because they alarm. Right? So barking is an alarming signal that also is a communication signal that also is a warning signal. Now, I know that people want to debark dogs because they have a Pyrenees and they live downtown. It's kind of like having a four-wheel drive Jeep and I take off the wheels so it doesn't have four wheels. It doesn't make any sense, right? So Debarking is not an option if you have a great Pyrenees. You have to make that choice. You have to have a five-year plan. What I will do for five years from now, can I have a Pyrenees? And it's not a big deal. If you cannot have a dog who's barking in your property because of your neighbors, because of your family members, right? Then it's not a bad thing to rehome your dog. It's totally okay. Because somebody needs a dog that barks more than you do. That's totally okay. I have dogs that bark. Sometimes, if somebody comes up, if something's happening, I, I'll appreciate that. And I appreciate that, and then I reward that, and then it stops. So if you do have a dog who's barking, which is completely natural, then you have to teach your dog that's completely natural to be done after barking. So because you know that something is going on, and now you appreciate your dog for doing that, and then dog stops barking because the information is shared. Why would the dog bark for no reason, right? There is a reason. The reason is for you to get alert or to make things go away. So if you are alert, then tell the dog, thank you for appreciating you telling me, how about you go back to your bed? I got it from there. Or if your dog wants to communicate, then ask yourself a question. Why does my dog want to communicate? Does he want to go to the bathroom? Why would he bark about it? Why didn't I let him out in the first place? So it's up to me. It's not up to the dog. So if the dog learns from a puppy that barking gets you things, then it's up to the person who grew up with that dog to encourage the dog to barking to get things. So don't complain that the dog is barking because you appreciate it, obviously. Otherwise, you would open the door to let him out for potty before he barks. You would feed before he barks. You would give him water before he barks, right? Now, 
There are other reasons why the dogs have a combination of things. They are, have aggression and they bark. Considering, if you listen to the previous message, that aggression is something very natural, then the dog may show natural aggression and add to the barking into the equation to tell everybody, hey, stay away from my property because I don't know what I'm going to do next. So I'm barking about it. So barking is a warning signal so the dog avoids an escalation of the event. So you appreciate that too, because you don't want anybody to get harmed. Now we have also the gardening into the equation, and gardening is something very natural. I lock my cars. I even have a fence around my property. Not only that, I have a dog a collar on. Okay, and then if I'm going to my coffee shop and sit down and have my coffee, I want my name to be on it, and I'm guarding my coffee so nobody else can take it. You haven't seen aggression yet. Try to take my coffee away in the morning. I haven't had one, by the way, so watch what you're posting here. Now, from there, and tell me if I'm wrong, right? If you feel that what I'm saying is stupid, it doesn't make any sense, type it in the comments. I'm not being mean about it. I just want to understand which, which exactly part I didn't explain right. So, let's talk about resource guarding. Resource guarding is something natural to the dog and has a big concept behind that. Resource guarding is not really resource guarding, it's fear of losing it. Fear of losing what? Fear of losing a partner, fear of losing safety, fear of losing food, fear of losing survival. So all of things that the dog resource guards is totally natural. He resource guards his flock, so it makes sure that nobody will take it away from them. He resource guards his property, so nobody will enter. It's a concept, it's a philosophy kind of sort of thing. So we do that. I think we are more resource guarding than our dogs, considering that we lock our cars, we have name tags, we have license plates. All these things is to identify what is ours. What the dog does is basically, in order to clarify what's his, he's peeing on it. He's peeing in the corners, he's peeing on the tree. He marks his territory. Wolves do, too, by the way. But I'm not comparing Pyrenees with wolves, don't take me wrong. However, we need to understand that if a dog is scared, he will mark his territory. He's territorial. Now, territorial and resource guarding are kind of common things together. They're kind of like brothers and sisters. A dog will be territorial over his bed because his bed is his safety. So safety has been to be protected, and therefore the dog will resource guard his bed because he wants to be safe. Now, here's the problem. You have your dog sitting on a couch, or your dog hasn't on a bed, right? Perfectly fine. Now, come here, buddy. Mugs, come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Let's go. Good job. Resource guarding your couch and your bed is not something because the dog wants to take over your family. What's happening here is the dog has a preferred place that he feels safe. The couch is in a strategic place, watching your doors, your windows, the entrance. He can see the whole house, right? And that bed is also safe for him because it has at least two corners, the arm rest and the back rest. So the dog feels safe. It's a perfect place to be. It's kind of like being on an elevated place so you can see the whole thing and you feel good about it. Now, if you have visitors coming in and they want to sit on the couch and your dog is growling about it or the other dog comes up and he growls about it, it's not because the dog wants to take over your family or talk, takes over the other dog or being dominant crap, right? It's about he wants to defend his place, his strategic point, which is his job. If it's not his job, then don't let him up there because that in particular thing, you actually reinforce his job. You put him in a position that he has all this access, he will take that job on, right? Now, if your dog is resource cutting about food, it's a little bit more complicated because food resource cutting has multiple issues. A, it could be trauma. B, it could be lack of nutrients. C, it could be a problem that you're not feeding enough. Then the dog can may have issues, digestive issues, or he's being stressed. So all these factors playing around for the dog showing resource guarding. Now, picture this. You have a dog who is stressed because your family is stressed, and then you just move to another property, and now the dog is marking, barking, showing aggression, 
resource guarding, territorial aggression, and guess why? Because of all these environmental factors that you are 99% responsible for. So, put that all on the same plate. We see that you have a great dog who does a great job. No better dog out there does a better job than yours. He's your perfect dog. You just don't know it. So here's my point. My point is, if a dog like a Great Pyrenees will go into the fire to save his flock, stay there with the flock because it's his family, and he wants to protect his family with his life, and then you think using a prong collar, shock collar, and any other aversive tools is a great opportunity to take the dog, give him a lesson, I think you make a wrong decision having that dog at the first place. Because you're going to punish your dog for doing the job he was bred to do. It's kind of like you being punished for having, for the being the person you are. It doesn't make any sense. Or being punished for the color you have. Or for the family you are. Right? It doesn't make any sense. So why would you use those tools? Because somebody told you they have no problems, they're just fine? No, they're not. They lied to you. Those people who suggest you to use those tools lie to you that they're not a problem, it's just fine, it's totally humane. That's just BS. So go back to the first questions that I had in the beginning. Are you aware of your dog? Do you understand his breed traits? Do you understand the quality of your dog you have? Or think, using any types of aversive tools in that kind of dog... I would suggest or think the whole concept having that dog. Because all you have to do is educating your dog and offer him a different job description. Very simple. You have to work every day for many months to teach your dog the job. Because Pyrenees, that's what they do. They learn from their job while doing the job, while observing others doing the job. So if you behave accordingly and yell at your dog for barking, he sees that, oh, that's the job. We bark about things, right? I bark, you bark, everybody barks. Perfect. Now, if you resource guard your socks and you attack your dog for taking something, you teach your dog that aggression is what we need to defend our stuff. Right? You see what's happening here? All of a sudden, you recognize and you remember the first time you grab your socks mouth out of your dog's mouth, that you actually taught your dog how to be aggressive. The way you yelled at your dog for doing a mistake, you taught him actually how to behave if things go wrong. So, again, whose problem is this really? Is it the dog's problem of being the behavior he does, or is it your problem the way you educate him? I'm not blaming you for doing wrong because you didn't know better, but now you know. Now you understand that it's your job to educate your dog, and it's not the shock collar's job, and it's not the dog trainer's job, because all they do is try to explain to you what you did wrong. No, I want to make you things right. Educate your dog, explain to your dog, authoritative, not authoritarian. Explain your dog the job description, break it down in small individual pieces like you would put a puzzle together. The blue colors, the red colors, the green colors, and now you put this gold thing pictures together, it may last you for one year or two. So in these one or two years, you train your dog to be a professional he can be. You reach your dog's potential. You don't use shock collars, you don't use prong collars, you don't use shaker cans, you don't use throw chains, you don't throw aversive tools. They're just for those who have no clue. But you're better than that. So I suggest sit down, learn your skills, be a dog parent that you want to be, and educate your dog now, no matter how old your dog is. There's never a dog too old to learn new things. It's an old saying for people who have no clue. So, with your bathrobe, don't worry about it. Nobody cares what, what you're wearing. Go outside, start working with your dog. Teach him that going to the window means also you have to come back from the window and you appreciate that. Teach your dog that seeing a car passing by is not a threat. It's not going to kill him just because it looks like a predator. No. We appreciate that, but we're going to stay away from the street a little bit. We're going to go to areas where not so much traffic and educate him that passing a car by is totally fine and we reward that too. So he doesn't need to worry about that. Teach him that you come up with good intentions, right? You go up with good intentions so your dog doesn't need to worry about your hands taking something away that he appreciates. And you definitely not your hands are here to punish or push the button or choke the chain. Make sense? So I wish you a great rest of your weekend. 
and please reconsider yourself. If you have a problem with your dog, at least search out for help. Don't push the button, don't chalk the chain, don't punish your dog for doing something he was bred to do four million generations before you. Thanks a lot.